Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the channel. UFC Vegas 43 just ended, and this is going to be my post-fight reaction. I'm mainly going to talk about the main event and co-main event, but I'm going to briefly touch on every fight on the main card. I, it wasn't the greatest card on paper. It had some sneaky good fights. wasn't the greatest card when it actually all played out. But, you know, we'll talk about it anyway. I'll give you all my post-fight reactions. If you guys join me for the live stream, watch along. I appreciate you very much. Uh, if you guys enjoy these post fights, even for the smaller cards, do me a favor. Make sure to like the video. I really appreciate it. So the main event, Ketlin Vieira versus Misha Tate. And I am officially 28-11 and 11 in my main event predictions for 2021. Uh, I'm very proud of that record. Uh, Ketlin Vieira, I picked her. I just thought the game had passed Misha Tate by. I just thought, you know, Misha Tate came back. And looked good against Mariana Renault, who's 44 years old, 45 years old, retiring. And I feel like a lot of people were picking Tate in this fight. But Ketlin Vieira, while she's not the elite of the elite, I feel like the division has evolved enough where, you know, Ketlin Vieira was going to be able to beat up Misha Tate. I thought she was going to finish her in the second or third round. I think my official prediction was second round rear naked choke. It went to decision. Ketlin Vieira wins by decision. And let me start off by talking about this main event and telling you guys that I honestly believe, I'm always open to hearing everybody's opinion, but if you believe that Misha Tate won that fight, I believe that is disconnected from reality. I know the commentary team was talking about how it was so close and there was tweets popping up on the screen that there were these rounds were toss-ups. I thought this was a clear 4-1 win for Ketlin Vieira possibly even 5-0. I gave the fourth round to Misha Tate. She took her down, controlled her a little bit, landed some decent shots in the clinch and just controlled her. I honestly believe that fourth round could have went either way, but I personally gave it to Misha Tate. Other than that, you look throughout the fight and you know when I when I talk about this main event and I go what Ketlin Vieira did well, I'm not impressed for, by her performance. So guys, don't take it the wrong way. I don't think it was a spectacular performance by any means, but Misha Tate was the same Misha Tate she's always been, but just five years older. She's not changed. She's been the same Misha Tate for years. She looks to move forward. She looks to hit you with big shots. She looks to crowd you, take you down, and kind of, you know, ground and pound. She's sloppy on the feet. She looked like she was playing with puppets throughout the throughout the fight. The, I don't know what she was doing with her hands, but she literally looked like she was playing with puppets. Uh, Ketlin Vieira, you look, you look at the two just in the first round, and you could see the technical deficiencies from Misha Tate in the striking. I mean, the hands look terrible. Uh, the, the the striking defense looked terrible. Ketlin Vieira had her right hand glued to her chin. Uh, every time Misha Tate pressed forward, Ketlin Vieira was pumping the jazz, snapping her head back, then landing the right hand. Now, this was pretty much the entire fight. Ketlin Vieira went for a takedown in the first round, was unsuccessful. Uh, but she, she dominated the fight. She was every time Misha Tate started to do that blitz forward where she just wanted to land these crazy wild winging punches. And don't get me wrong, there were some times she landed though. She landed some big right hands uh, throughout the fight. But Ketlin Vieira was just snapping her head back with the jab, landing uppercuts, landing right hands. And every time Misha Tate seemed like she started to get some confidence and would rush forward and wasn't worried about the striking of Ketlin, she would immediately get clipped with a like a two-punch counter and then immediately start heading back on the back foot. And this was pretty much the story of the fight. Ketlin snapped her head back many a times. She busted her up. Ketlin was just bigger, stronger. And in my live stream, I made a comparison that I believe is very true uh, to Dustin Poirier versus Max Holloway. I know what you guys are thinking. How are you comparing Ketlin Vieira versus Misha Tate to Dustin Poirier versus Max Holloway? But my comparison was the power differential. Misha Tate was landing some shots. They weren't very many. There wasn't a high volume, but she was landing some. And the comparison that I was saying is, even when Misha landed big shots on Ketlin Vieira, Ketlin Vieira just ate them like they were absolutely nothing. And when Ketlin Vieira was landing on Misha Tate, you could just tell that, Ket that Misha Tate was just, her head was snapping back. They were doing significant damage. Vieira had, you know, a size advantage. She clearly had a power advantage. Uh, you know, I think she had a strength advantage, but Misha Tate kind of hung in there with her strength. Um, I thought maybe if Misha Tate could get this later in the fight, fourth, fifth round, I thought maybe Ketlin Vieira with her limited gas tank, Misha Tate could kind of wear her out and, you know, maybe get a finish in later rounds. But the pace of the fight, Misha Tate did not put a pace on her that Ketlin couldn't handle. Ketlin was relatively fresh in the fifth round 
And she did the same thing for the whole entire fight. She kind of backed up, let Misha come to her, count her. Backed up, let Misha come to her, count her. Uh, it was the same thing for the entire fight. The main event wasn't particularly exciting. Uh, Ketlin Vieira would get smashed by Amanda Nunes. So would Misha Tate, as we've already seen five, six years ago at this point. Uh, you know, but Ketlin Vieira looked decent. She looked technical. Uh, she was strong, but no killer instinct. She did nothing with any sense of urgency at all. I felt at any point in time, if Ketlin Vieira wanted to, she could just walk through Misha Tate's punches and probably finish her. And, you know, Misha Tate, I, again, I thought she won the fourth round. She got a takedown. She controlled her a little bit. She pushed her against the fence. Uh, she beat her up in the, uh, you know, in the dirty boxing. But also, one last thing I want to mention about the main event when, when talking about what Misha did good, she kept hanging on to like a single Muay Thai clinch and was doing absolutely nothing with it. And Ketlin Vieira was just rabidly punching the body on Misha Tate. Uh, but, you know, for people to think that Misha Tate won multiple rounds or that this fight was competitive, I just believe that's just not true. Uh, I think this was a one-sided beatdown with maybe a close round in the fourth round where Misha takes it just because she controlled her a little bit more. Maybe Ketlin was taking the round off. You look at their faces, and I know this is not how fights are judged, but look at Misha's face and look at Ketlin's face. Misha was absolutely brutalized. She was bleeding. She was marked up, red everywhere. Ketlin, not a scratch on her. And I know that's not how fights are judged, but just look at that. I mean, I, I was literally shocked. You know, and, and I'm not a big fan of the UFC commentary teams a lot of the time, uh, but they do have a hard job. But the fact that they were acting like this was a super competitive fight, I think, you know, and th this is probably a topic for another video. I think sometimes the commentary team comes in with a preconceived narrative and it's hard for them to stray away from that, even if their eyes are telling them something different. And they see Misha Tate. Misha Tate's a name. She's a former champ former one of the best bantamweights in the world and it's hard for them to see that this Ketlin Vieira you know who's 12 and 2 is outboxing her you know bullying her around the cage you know in some positions um, and just just brutalizing her on the feet so I think it's a it's a weird scenario I don't think this fight was close I don't think Misha Tate has any business you know potentially challenge challenging for a championship in the future uh, if Misha Tate would have won this fight she would have got a title shot but again and this is the last thing I'm going to say about the main event. Uh, Ketlin Vieira and Misha Tate would absolutely get brutalized by Amanda Nunes. You know, Misha Tate already has, you know, when she was far closer to her prime than now, she would definitely, it would definitely happen now. You know, her striking, you know, defense weaknesses are just absolutely atrocious. Uh, you know, she was playing puppets the whole time. So let's move on to the co-main event, a fight that I was very excited for. And I enjoyed it, kind of, but it let me down uh, quite a bit. I picked Michael Chiesa. Uh, Sean Brady ended up winning by decision 29-28. Uh, you know, the first two rounds, neither guy really did too much on the feet. And when I picked this fight, I thought Sean Brady was a little bit better striker, and I thought Michael Chiesa was a little bit better grappler. I was completely off on this. Uh, Sean Brady was the better grappler. Michael Chiesa was the better striker. Uh, Sean Brady was able to take Kiesa down in the first and second round, get his back, I think, in both rounds. Uh, and, you know, it just, it was just Michael Kiesa landed a couple strikes on the feet. He was landing, you know, a straight left, but he didn't do it for long enough. He was controlled in both those rounds uh, for the majority of the rounds. Then in the third round, Sean Brady, Sean Brady started to wear down. And uh, I almost said Sean O'Malley there. Sean Brady started to wear down. And it was crazy that, you know, this is why I wasn't super impressed with the performance, but I'll get to that in a minute. Sean Brady started to wear down. Michael Chiesa really started to put it on him on the feet. And at one point, Sean Brady was hurt badly. Michael Chiesa was going after him. He was throwing these step-in knees to the body. And he was getting himself in trouble. They were landing, but Brady was catching him and taking him down. He caught him in the third round, took him down. Uh, Michael Chiesa fought with everything he had to get back to the feet. He got back to the feet with like 30, 40 seconds to go. They clinched up. Michael Chiesa tripped him down. And Michael Chiesa ends the round in full mount, just raining down punches on an exhausted Sean Brady. And I think had there been 30 more seconds in this fight, I think Michael Chiesa would have stopped Sean Brady. Uh, so overall, I'm not super impressed. Uh, you know, I know Sean Brady, Sean Brady has looked like a very hot prospect and looked very good. But, and I said this in the live stream as well, 
if you're getting outstruck on the feet by Michael Chiesa, you know, what does that really mean? Because Michael Chiesa is one of the, you know, you know, he's not a very good striker. You know, he's one of the lesser of in the welterweight division as far as striking goes. Uh, you have other guys like Leon Edwards or Jorge Masvidal. And I know, you know, Sean Brady has that takedown threat. And it was very impressive that he was able to take Chiesa down, control him. You know, he wasn't able to submit him, but it was it was a good job holding him down. But there was absolutely no damage done. In any of the rounds, when Sean Brady got Michael Chiesa down, he did absolutely no damage. And in the second round, Michael Chiesa, you know, he kept it on the feet for a little bit longer than he did in the first and, you know, I really believe there was a slight chance, you never know with the judges, that Michael Chiesa could have got a 29-28 decision just because the inaction of Sean O'Brady. Sean, why do I keep saying that? Of Brady in the fight. And, you know, for him to put so little volume out, uh, as in Brady, and to be that exhausted in the third round, he really needs to work on his cardio. Uh, but, you know, he's going to find himself in the top 10. He wants. He said he wants somebody to fight somebody in the top 10 next. Uh, this is a terrible loss for Kiesa. I don't know where he goes from here. I don't think he loses that much stock. But if you're getting out grappled by Brady, you're probably going to get out grappled by Usman or Covington as well. So let's move down the card. Joanne Calderwood versus Tala Santos. Uh, I was never a big fan of Calderwood. I don't think she's that good. People act like she's some world beater at flyweight. Santos absolutely destroyed her. Uh, Calderwood threw some strikes, but they were just labored slow. Santos just lets loose on a combination, finishes her in the first round, drops her, ends up with a rear naked choke, taps her out. Great performance by Santos, and she might be a legit contender at flyweight. There's very little contenders at flyweight right now. So who knows? She could be fighting Valentina Shevchenko next. Um, you know, We'll have to see how that plays out, but it was, it was a dominant win, and Joanne Calderwood was someone who was in line for a title shot at one point in time. Uh, you know, I don't know what the hype is about Joanne. Uh, I don't think she has the greatest wrestling. I don't think she has the greatest striking. I don't think she's really great anywhere. She's just okay. She's had a long UFC career. Uh, but Santos went out there and treated her like that. And she went out there and absolutely dominated her and finished her in the first round. I thought Santos was going to finish her in the first round. I did not. I think I said TKO. I did not say rear naked choke. Uh, but she was very close to finishing her. She dropped her at one point and almost started to walk away, but the ref didn't do anything, so she jumped in, ground and pound, eventually found her way to the rear naked choke. Moving down the card, Ronnie Yaya versus Kong. I don't even remember how to say the rest of his name. Kong, clearly the better striker, clearly a bigger fighter, um, was winning the first round, outstruck him. Yaya was just kind of spamming takedowns, Damian Maya style, uh, but wasn't able to get him. In the second round, Yaya timed a leg kick from Kong, Took him down, controlled him on the ground, did very little damage, was looking for submissions, not super impressive. Third round, more of the same. Uh, but Kong hurt Yaya badly in the early of the third round, was looking for a finish, and Ronnie Yaya took him down, controlled him for the rest of the round, and gets the second and third round and wins by decision. Davy Grant versus Adriana Yanez. I had Yanez in this fight. He won by split decision. But this fight was very, very close. It was closer than I thought it was going to be. Yanez's striking looked very good in the first round. But Grant is lightning fast. You wouldn't think. You know, he was throwing some spinning heel kicks that never really connected. But you would think, you know, he was not that fast. And he, he was missing with them. He threw them, he threw them a lot. Um, but he was landing good teeth kicks to the body. He was landing good inside leg kicks. Yanez is very, you know, heavy on that lead leg. And Grant was beating it up. Grant was getting busted up with some jabs. But the second round, I really thought Grant took the second round. And the third round was very close, but I gave it to Grant. I just thought he had more output. Uh, Yanez was just kind of getting tired, starting to slow down a little bit. And it seemed like Davy Grant was just getting warmed up. I don't think it was a robbery by any means. I thought Yanez clearly got the first. I thought Grant clearly took the second. And I really thought the third was up for grabs. And, you know, whether you give it to Grant or Yanez... Uh, you know, I don't think it really matters because it's not a robbery. It was very close in that third round. Yanez gets the split decision. You know, he, he gets to keep his streak. I, I forgot how many win streak he's on right now. The commentary team was talking about it. But either way, I think both guys' stock rises. And the bantamweight division is just one of the, is the best division in the UFC, in my opinion. I can't wait to see where Yanez goes next. But he clearly has a lot to work on. You know, he, he, he was getting clipped up to the body quite a bit in this fight. Uh, Davy Grant was just slamming those teep kicks in. The inside leg kicks had a great effect on him. And I think obviously he's still very young. He needs to work on some of those things. And he's lucky he got a win tonight because honestly, going into that scorecard, I really thought that, you know, he could potentially lose that fight. And there was another scorecard tonight. 
I can't remember which fight it was. I think it might have been Ronnie Yaya got a 30-27, which I think is egregious. I'm not 100% sure which fight it was. I think it was that one, though. Uh, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think about all this? Do you think the Misha... Uh, if you answer one question in the comments for me, answer me this. Do you think Ketlin Vieira versus Misha Tate was competitive? Because obviously you already know my opinion. I did not think it was competitive at all. I think Ketlin Vieira absolutely dominated her. Uh, maybe lost a very close fourth round where Vieira kind of took a round off. But I'm curious of your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to like the post fight. I really appreciate it. If you guys want me to continue to do these post fights for smaller cards, please like the video. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.